Hi guys, welcome to another YouTube video. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm gonna to talk you through how I hold the club and a couple of grip tips which should really help you hit it better when you go on the course and also hit it an awful lot straighter. Now, the grip is something I focus on basically every single range session because it's so, so important. It has so many other little influences and how we can move the club is greatly affected by how we hold the club. Now, most of you would have seen, you know, YouTube videos galore on, on having a weaker versus stronger grip. There's just a couple more little things which I would suggest um, which fine tune the quality of your grip. And I'm gonna run through those today. Now, the key part which most of us find is that we're constantly told to try and see at least two knuckles on our glove hand, which is important, but that's really just the, the, um, the telltale sign as to whether other things are in the correct place. So you could have your, have your grip placed in the palm of your hand, not generally a good thing, and you could see two to three knuckles. However, I'll do some zoom in, I'll do some close-ups. You can now see though, I've got, a, I've got a hole in the end of my grip, okay? So this butt of my grip has too much movement through strike. So we might see a bit of early release, we might see a bit of flip. You know, the club is not secure in our hands. So this is the prerequisite to the knuckle section of the grip. And what I want you to do, it's very, very simple. I want you to take your club face perpendicular to a target line. I want you to have your fingers at right angles to the grip itself and laced roughly in the first knuckle of your fingers. Now this is really important what you do from here. You're gonna get the fingers to clamp around the grip first before you bring this palm on the top. And then you're gonna have the palm and the heel pad, you can see my glove is worn, on the top of the grip. So not only can I now see two knuckles, I can actually see a few more because I've got ridiculously slim wrists, but you can see the two knuckles and the hole in the end of the grip has disappeared. So the grip itself is actually sitting more in the fingers than it is the palm, okay? Really, really, really important. And the test you can do is a very, very simple one. The test that you can do is to have the club parallel to the floor, and then you're gonna take off your thumb and three fingers. You're only gonna leave your index finger on the club, and you should be able to balance the weight of the club in only one finger. Because, and this is vital, the index finger and the heel pad of this left hand are supporting the weight of the club and stopping the club from descending too early. Now, if I have the grip in my palm, but I can see lots of knuckles, if I have the grip in my palm, watch what happens when I do this test. It falls out. You can relate that into your golf swing to a bit of early release, okay? So you can't control, in my opinion, the weight of the club on the way down and the club will want to descend too early and therefore you'll deliver some reverse shuffling. okay? Whereas if you grip, get the grip in the fingers, remember right angles to the grip itself, fingers around first and then this heel pad on top, you'll be much more able to apply some pressure down through the end of the handle and stop the club head from descending too early. So not only are you gonna get better at ball striking, but it's also gonna make you hit the ball straighter. Okay, so part two is the effect it has on the direction of the ball. Now I have people who hook the ball and I have people who slice the ball and they can both come in with a weak left hand grip. So you might find that typically people who have a weaker left hand grip where the thumb is down the middle of the club, it might be a little palmy and they might be only able to see one knuckle on that hand or typically be people who will inevitably hit the ball off to the right hand side, okay? Now if I tweak my grip and just double check the numbers there, so my path was three and a half left, my club face was 12 degrees open, I'm gonna go through this checkup I've just given you, so fingers first, palm over. Now watch the effect this has on this ball flight and I'll try not to change anything else. So we're just gonna hit a normal shot. That should come out fairly straight, maybe a little cut. So now I've hit a shot dead on target. The club path is four and a half left. That's kind of typical for me because I like a fade. But now the face angle 
has shut almost 10 degrees. So we've gone from this one where our path is three and a half left and a face of 12 open to this one being four and a half left. Again, kind of typical, but now our club face is only 2.8 open, okay? Now it's obviously had a massive effect on my direction, but also you'll notice on the top left of the screen, I've gone from one swing at 120 to my next one at 157. Part of that will be because I will feel as if I can actually hit the ball with a bit more speed because I'm actually secure in the knowledge that the ball's gonna come out straight. But B would be that if I point the club face 12 degrees right of my target, if you have the club face square, then point it 12 degrees roughly to the right, you'll notice that the club face will also increase in its loft. It's very difficult to open the club face without increasing the loft on the club. So if you're slicing and you're struggling with, the, with a big curve off to the right, you're also losing some yardage because the strike isn't um, efficient enough. And also the face angle will be a lot more lofty. Okay, so you're turning your seven into really like an eight, maybe even a nine, depending on the severity of the slice. But if we get this grip correct, and that squares the club face out for us, we can really feel confident, confident in the fact that we can actually hit this with some speed. And it will just come off fairly straight. Okay? That was it a little bit heavy, so we'll do one more. It's always difficult because I'm trying to demonstrate, but I don't want to demonstrate. I just want to hit it. Let's try one more. Good one. Again, 4.2 and 1.6 open. Okay, so really consistent face and path numbers. So that leads me on to my final point. We've done the placement of the hand on the grip. We've spoken about how that grip will affect your face angle and now the knock-on effect to your face angle being more under control will be your ability to deliver a better path number. So when we see it on Instagram and we see it on YouTube, so many people are encouraging slicers to work on their path. And this, I think, is where a lot of slicers are going wrong. We've got face and we've got path, and the relationship of those two controls your direction, okay? Outside of strike. Imagine strike is on its own little kind of hemisphere over here. Now, the path only contributes roughly, with a, with a six or seven iron, roughly about 25% of your ball's direction. The face angle and where this face angle points through strike is dictating about 75% of your ball's direction. So when someone tells you, when you go into for a slice and someone tells you to work on your path, you're only really working on the 25%. Okay, my point to you is, why wouldn't you try and work on the 75%? Okay, the changes which are gonna give you the biggest difference. And then guess what? When you work on your face angle, and like the second one, you actually start hitting it a bit left if you're slicing the ball, then changing path is so less stressful, a lot less stressful, because you're not having to react to a direction which inevitably most of us are. You know, if you see the ball go left all the time, you're gonna to wanna to swing further right. If you see the ball go right all the time, you're gonna to wanna to swing further left. So our path is reaction, uh, sorry, reacting to where our club face is. And if our club face, like a lot of people, is open down to our grip, then it's an easy change. It will feel difficult for a week or two, but if you just keep drilling it out, if you hit some balls left, if you're a slicer, fantastic, okay? Then you would change path to make your ball flight more neutral and more um, centered over your target line. Now, on the other hand, if you hook the ball, this is the interesting part. So a lot of people might come in with a weak grip, but again, because we're all told to work on path all the time, and this happens a lot, um, funny enough, on, on my online lessons rather than my in-person lessons, is that I see a lot of people, and, and some people mess me on Instagram, and they have these lovely backswings but the club face gets really open at the top because they've got a weak left-hand grip. But then they try to drop the club on the inside and give it this really big inside-outside path, but it just ends up being almost like a flip, a flip.
flip draw, which can ruin low point control, rather than having the grip a little stronger. And I know it sounds counterintuitive. You're hitting the ball left and I'm telling you to strengthen your grip, but it's the reaction that the grip will have to your release. So if you have a weak grip, it's quite likely that you're gonna be coming in with the club face too vertical, okay? So the actual leading edge of the face is, is perpendicular to the floor. Now that means if you're coming from the inside, you're gonna to have to rotate your forearms over in order to hit this draw. However, that can, can lead to a draw. It might not be the most consistent draw, but it can also lead to blocks and pull draws, okay? But it really depends on where the club face is pointing. Whereas if we strengthen the grip, you would feel as if the club face is already square and you wouldn't have to try and rotate the hands over. And that's such a great feeling to try and draw it. I mean, I'm not a draw the ball, okay? I love a fade, absolutely love it. But I should be able to try and draw one without too much of a drastic flip through strike. So let's see how close I can get. So not too much of a over rotation. And I shut the face two degrees. Obviously because I'm a fader, I would have to work on my path a little more. But I think you understand that if the face is too open, sometimes that can cause a flip draw because you have to try and square it too much through strike. Whereas what I would suggest is work on your lead hand grip, place the fingers at right angles to the grip itself, get the fingers around the club, place the heel pad on the top of the club, do your grip test, take all fingers off apart from the index finger, can you balance the weight of the club? Should be really easy. And then you set up to your ball and you just try and collect it. You don't try and do too much with it. You just let the grip take the ball off. Okay? Ideally, they maybe start to go a little more left, if you're a slicer, obviously, but then you wouldn't have to compensate as much with the path and you could work on path safe in the knowledge that you're not going to hit it even further right if you start trying to swing inside outside okay i hope that helps that's my insight into how i hold the club i hope it has a has a really positive effect on your game as always if you like the video please hit the subscribe button give it a like for me and leave a comment below and we will see you next time take care